What's up guys and welcome to another video and more importantly, Happy New Year to everyone. Hope you're all absolutely fat and in desperation of some fitness advice and programming so you can buy my app. <laughs> anyway, today I'll be uh, taking you through my new split for 2023. It's a three day slip, 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 nip slip, split. Push, pull legs, textbook, classic split. I ain't done this for a while actually. A lot of my splits have been five days, but this is a three day one. I'll be resting on the fourth day and then I'll be repeating once again. It's gonna last me four to five weeks. The way it's done on the program is we will accumulate the volume and the intensity and then the fifth week is a deload week and then I'll most likely change to another program. But if it's still working for you, you can continue for another four or five weeks. So first exercise we're gonna start off with is a machine press. This is a very, very tasty Watson uh, plate loaded press, which I mean, the benefit of this one is we start wide and we come close together, which is a really comfortable range of motion. Most of the time when it comes to machines, I don't really like using them. I prefer to use barbells or dumbbells, particularly dumbbells. But um, for the split, which I'm doing for the next couple of weeks, I'll be using this fine piece of apparatus. So I'm going to do a couple sets, warming up, and then uh, we'll crack on with the working weight. Can we handle another 20? I think we can. First working set. This should be round about good enough weight for me. In your first week of training, particularly when you're following a new split, it's quite difficult to know what weight you should be picking, particularly when you're following the tempo, which I've told you to follow. The tempo I've given myself on this one is a two second negative, one second pause at the bottom, one second up, no second rest at the top. So focusing a little bit more on strength. So uh, we'll see how this is. If it's too hard, obviously I need to lower it. If it's too easy, then um, I'm probably gonna have to add a little bit. But week one is all about just getting familiar with your new split and figuring out what your working weight is gonna be. That was probably a little bit easy. What I'm doing differently with this exercise is I'm losing the tension at the bottom and I'm just having that one sort of second of rest so I can compose myself and go again. So that means that I can get away with lifting a little bit heavier. Usually, the majority of the time when I'm lifting it's just constant tension. But because um, we're having those breaks, we can focus a bit more on strength and power. 90 seconds of rest in between these. Today's pre-workout. As always, iced coffee. Set number two. That's good. I don't know if that was seven or eight reps. I'll have to watch that back. Probably could get away with doing a little bit heavier as well. Last set. If you are an advanced trainer and you've been training consistently, we're gonna push the failure on this one. If you're just getting into a routine after a long time off, then no need to push the failure. <laughs> very good, very good. And make sure when you finish, leave all the plates on the machine. Next exercise. Next exercise, we're gonna be hitting the mid delts. We're gonna be doing a lateral raise, but we will be using the absolute daddy of lateral raise machines. And that is this one here, the Watson plate loaded lateral raise machine. One of my favorite machines to use. If you don't have access to this machine, I suggest that you cancel your gym membership and leave your city, move country and find a gym where you can actually use one of these. So it will 100% be worth it. So, this one, we're going to do a couple more working sets. We'll do 12 reps. And then on the last set, we'll probably do a couple partials and push ourselves to failure. Yeah. <laughs> 
is a very good weight. Very close to hitting failure. Now, obviously, there will be a large percentage of people who are watching this video who don't have access to this piece of equipment. So a good substitute would be a line cable lateral raise or good old fashioned chest supported dumbbell lateral raises. But the added benefit of this one is the machine supplies so much resistance to the muscle when it's in the lengthened position, which is optimal. The problem with the dumbbells is in this position, you're not really working the muscle that much. You're really just overloading it in its shortened position when it's relatively weakest, so not ideal. So after 60 seconds rest, we're gonna go in set number two. So last set, I'm probably not gonna be able to get more than 12 reps. However, I'm gonna pump out a little bit more uh, partial reps. Even though partial reps will be coming later on in the program, week three and four, because uh, I'm a well seasoned lifter, I will be applying some additional stress in week one. Wow, I believe that was failure. Ooh. So that's the side delts fried. We're gonna go back to chest now and do a seated cable fly. So ideally, when doing this, first of all, I want you to do it, the cable crossover machine where they're further apart, not too close, because when they're too close, you just can't get the best resistance profile from it. This one's much better. Do it standing if you want to, but I prefer to do it seated because you're Body's fixed in place. The goal is keeping your hands same level as your chest, elbows pointing the same direction as the cables, so don't point your elbows down. Too many people point the elbows down. And we're just gonna bring the elbows together at the top and squeeze. Stretch together, squeeze. Keep your shoulders fixed in place. Don't push them forward and over engage the delt. again oh my god 60 second rest in between these i wasn't following my tempo exactly i wanted to do uh i should be doing a one second squeeze at the top so let's try and do that Wow, noticeably harder with that squeeze. That was good. If you are struggling to get the one second squeeze at the top, I suggest you lower the weight. I want you to pick a weight whereby you can stick to the tempo throughout the set. If your form is getting too sloppy, you have gotta lower the weight. And everybody who does my programs for the first time and they follow the tempo, they are shocked at how much weight they have to lower it by in order to match the tempo I've given them. But it works. The soreness is crazy, the gains are crazy. Next exercise we're gonna move on to is a Y raise. Now I've actually not really done this too frequently on my videos and I think I could safely say it's an exercise which I wish I'd started doing earlier. Great one for building the delts, particularly the mid, a little bit of the rear as well. The idea is we wanna be facing a cable crossover machine, one like this or one like that. We're sitting upright and basically we're just gonna be going like that. 
Don't bend the elbows, keep the arms straight. Bring the hands up like that. And basically, if you come around here, we're aiming for this position here, okay? So you can see the definition, the fibers start to pop as they contract. That's the final finishing position, okay? You can do it with the handles, holding onto the handle, but whenever I hold onto handles, whenever I'm doing a lateral raise, I, I find there's too much engagement in the forearm. If you use uh, the straps, the ankle straps like this, it's gonna be a lot better. So if your gym has them, great. If not, I'd highly suggest you invest in some and just take them with you on uh, push day. Very good exercise. Even I have to watch myself back on that one because I feel like my arms are straight, but there may have been a slight bend. Was there a bend, Christoph? Did you see a bend? He says not really, but we'll see on the, uh, the playback. That's why it's always important to film yourself. You think you might be doing it right, but when you watch yourself do the exercise, you're like, oh wow, I was doing that quite wrong. But it felt good either way. Four sets of these, 60 seconds rest in between. So how I would progress with this the following week, we've done three sets on the slightly heavier weight, one set on the lighter weight. Week two, I would make sure that every set is the heavier weight. I could arguably do one up two sets with a slightly heavier weight than what I've done this week, but I might be pushing it a little bit. And then I could also incorporate a couple of partials on the last set. But I'm not gonna do that this week, there's no need to. My delts are pretty fried as it is. But ideally, the way you want to see it as each week progresses, the sessions are getting more intense. They will naturally become more intense because I'll tell you to do specific things on the plan. Maybe an extra few reps, an extra working set, drop sets, partial reps, rest pauses, things like that. But also, I want you to be focusing on perfecting your form with each week that comes, okay? you should get better at executing these exercises over time. So even if you were to stick with the same weight, if your form is better and you're able to maintain the tension or more of the tension on the working muscle, then that is progress. You've added more stress to the muscle that you want to target. So you'll see progress. Last set. actually felt much better on that weight. So now we're gonna move on to a dip, but we're gonna do a chest focus dip, okay? So I'll show you what that is. Okay, so with the chest dip, it's really a combination of the tricep and particularly the lower pec, which is gonna help move our body in an exercise such as this. What we wanna try and do is lean forward into the dip, okay? It's maybe a little bit difficult for beginners. If that is the case, I would recommend, if you have a training partner, get them to pull your feet behind you. So you're kind of in this kind of a position. If not, if you're a pretty advanced lifter, then you're gonna lean forwards. Tasty. 
Difficult though, I must admit. So as this one is quite challenging, I would give yourself 90 seconds rest in between. And for those that you tried it and you failed miserably, then I recommend you do something like this where you put the bench behind you and you can almost lean into it a bit. Like that. Still feels pretty difficult, certainly more difficult than a press up, but not quite as hard as having to tilt your torso forward as I did before. Done. Now let's uh, finish off with some triceps. So we're gonna do a cable tricep crossover, three second negative. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lean forward just a little bit to get ourselves or to get the tricep in the fully lengthened position. Okay, if you stand upright, it's not stretch as much as it could be. If we do that, then we got a super duper stretch. Okay, so we'll go through a full range of motion. So you're gonna maintain this position throughout Keep the elbows locked and then extend and squeeze. Great exercise, also a very good one for people who have issues with the elbow because of the way it's set up and the way you can position your arms and the direction of your elbow. You're just moving your arms through a very natural range of motion. Okay, a lot of the time if you're trying to do like a straight bar extension, it feels uncomfortable, unnecessary stress on the elbow joint and a lack of range of motion, particularly if you just use the, um, you know, the rope for tricep extensions. This one, you can go through a much bigger range of motion. So it's optimal. Made it a little bit heavier because I'm an absolute savage. Ah, that was a good set. You know when you have a set and you're like, that was a good set. That was a good set. Ideally you want every set to be like that. I stood a little bit further back as well. It felt more comfortable. Last set. taking it to extreme failure on that one because I do have another tricep exercise to follow. Last exercise, we're gonna do an overhead tricep extension with the rope. You can do it standing, but I'm gonna do it seated again. So I'm not rocking all over the place. Torso upright, elbows just above your head. Try and keep your elbows fixed in the position the whole time and then up. Extend, squeeze at the top. Nice. Pretty straightforward. 60 second rest in between these sets. Three sets, so in again. Oh, 
nearly done. Pretty good workout. This whole split which I've designed is pretty much, it's a very balanced split. Like we're not really focused on one particular muscle group. It's sort of evenly proportioned so everything's getting worked equally. So I would imagine after five weeks of this, I'll adjust the split to focus on whatever I think is lagging at uh, that particular point in time. Yes, finished. That took one hour, 10 minutes. I think because these, these routines, the push-pull legs, there's quite a lot of exercises in them, so uh, I can't imagine you're, you're going to be completing them under 16 minutes. If you are, I'd seriously question how you're implementing these programs. But I have given you a 60 or 90 second rest period to follow, so please do stick to them. If you feel like you need more than 90 seconds rest, obviously do so if you need to, but they should only really be used when doing the compound movements. Short intense sessions ideally no faffing about no talking no distractions go to the gym get the job done be consistent and you will get the physique you want in 2023 so thank you very much for watching give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe and of course first app thirstofficial.com discount on at the moment so take advantage of it see you in the next one